Hey, I'm Lucy Grimble here to talk today about stripping our worship back to basics with wearewhip.com. For me, and I think for so many people, um, the pandemic has forced us to um, take our worship back to basics. Um, on a Sunday morning at the church where I am worship pastor, I've been leading live um, during lockdown, but just me playing the keys and singing. And that has been a huge adjustment because I'm used to playing with a band on a Sunday morning and making a big sound. And then suddenly we've all been forced to sort of bring it back and, and uh, make it basic and make it simple um, but it's actually in that process I found that these have been some of the most powerful times of worship for me so I just I guess I want to start this tips session by saying that strip back worship is not less than big band or big production worship um, it is just as powerful and it moves the heart of God um, there's so many biblical precedents for strip back worship in the Bible think about David playing his harp up on the hills around Jerusalem. Think about Paul and Silas in prison, just worshiping with their voices. Think about the disciples in the upper room gathering together to worship together. And those I believe were heartfelt, honest, intimate times of worship, but they were also powerful and world changing. So I just wanna encourage you that your worship is powerful your worship changes atmospheres whether it's just you leading on your own or whether it is you with a with a whole band um our worship um when it's from the heart when it is pure when it is honest it moves the heart of god and that's ultimately what we want to do um and i think the most important thing is in all things just to serve the lord um, making the best of what we have available to us so I'm going to move on to some practical tips and I'm mainly focusing this at people who have been forced to strip things back because of the pandemic or people who are sort of finding themselves leading just themselves or maybe with one or two other people. So I hope this is helpful. So number one, plan your set and practice. Um, and this might sound really basic and actually I think this applies to worship, whether it's just one person or a whole band. The more you can prepare, the more you are going to reduce the anxiety um, and the uncertainty that maybe you would feel uh, when you get up to lead if you haven't prepared. Um, so think about your song list carefully. Be thoughtful about the songs you're choosing. Be honest about your skill level on your instrument. Um, if a song calls for lots of riffs and lead lines, if it's got a complicated rhythm, a complicated time signature, lots of chord changes, and you want to do that song, which I really encourage you to do, make sure you've practiced, make sure you've been through it a number of times so that when it comes to the Sunday morning, you can just focus on worshiping, you can just focus on leading and you don't need to focus on trying to remember the song um, or trying to think about what's coming next. Um, this really, really helps me. I make sure that I practice, um, you know, lots before a Sunday morning so that when I get up to lead, I'm not what's going through my head isn't oh I can't remember how that song goes and how does how does that you know how does the arrangement go how does the structure go I'm just thinking okay God I want to I want to worship you now and I want to just lead people into your presence so practice 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 um, is so so helpful so that is my first tip um, number two I would encourage you to practice the transitions between songs um, Again, when you're doing strip back worship or if it's just two or three of you, transitions can feel awkward and clunky if you haven't practiced them and if you don't intentionally know how you're gonna connect the songs together. What you really wanna avoid is sort of awkward gaps in your worship where you don't really know how to connect to the next song. Intentional gaps are great. If you wanna plan in some moments of silence or some moments of reflection, that's amazing. But I think what you wanna avoid is sort of unintentional gaps where there is just a, a forced silence because everybody's a bit lost. So I think trying to practice transitions so that they can be as seamless as possible and for the people worshiping along with you, they don't even notice it's happening and they can just stay in that place of worship, um, I think is really good. Um, some things that really help me when I choose a song, in a key, I will try and choose the next song um, and pitch it either in the same key or in a relative key. And that means that I 
can quite easily flow from one song to the next. So for example, if I'm doing the first song in B flat, then maybe I'll do the second song in F, and maybe I'll do the third song in C, um, because they're all relative to each other, and it just means it's easy to flow between them. If you're mu more musically gifted, more musically talented, by all means, work out some complicated and interesting and juicy transitions between songs, but I think the the main aim is to try and make those transitions as intentional and seamless as possible. Tip number three, I would encourage you to encourage people verbally. Um, trying to worship through a laptop, you know, as, a, as someone who's trying to worship along with you is, is a strange experience. It's probably quite a distracting experience. So I think it's really important to communicate with the people that you're leading and to encourage them along the way, encourage them to stay in that place of worship and to track along with you. Um, you might want to literally encourage them to close their eyes, hold out their hands, do something physical, stand up. Um, you might want to pray for them. You might want to share a, a scripture as an encouragement, but I think the more you can try and make it a sort of two-way or more interactive thing and encourage people verbally through the set, I think that really, really helps. Number four, you might actually want to go even further than that and encourage people to actually remove distractions from the room that they're in. Um, I lead a worship night with a friend of mine called Jake Isaac and um, these are sort of intimate nights of worship in the round, 150 people max. And what we do on those nights is to encourage people to remove probably one of the greatest distractions that we all have in our lives which is the mobile phone. Um, so we encourage people just to turn their phones off or put them away for the whole night. And we say that we don't really want people to take photos. We don't want people to video the event. We don't want to see it on social media. We just want people to be in the room and to be focused on connecting with God. So you might want to try that with your congregation, with your with the people that you're leading. Just encourage them, you know, we're going to worship for 20 minutes or half an hour. Maybe put the phone away and just focus on connecting with God and just make this time sacred and precious. So I would definitely encourage that. And the final top tip I have is to relax. Um, when you're leading in a stripped back way, it can feel like a lot of pressure and it can feel like you're very exposed and very vulnerable. So it's so important um, that you enjoy it and that you relax and that you feel confident in that place. Things that really help me are to pray before I lead or to get someone else to pray for me for the set. And then I'll often just sit um, at my keyboard and close my eyes and meditate on a scripture to remind myself that God is right there with me. Um, and that just fills me with confidence because I know if God is with me in worship, then, you know, we can just have some fun. So, um, yeah, I would just encourage you just do your best and and try and relax and try and enjoy it. So those are my top five tips. I hope they're helpful and I just really pray that you're blessed as you worship, whether it's in a stripped back way or whether it's with a full band. Um, I pray that you just really grow in confidence um, as you worship Jesus and as you lead people into his presence. Don't forget to like, comment or subscribe and also check out my new song, Nothing Can Separate. Um, click on the link in the description below to hear more.